Yeah, I mean, first of all, here, what Tyson's done is he's jabbed at Wilder's glove, which yeah. has occupied Wilder's glove. And the more you keep this right hand occupied, the safer it's going to be for you because it's, he's having to think defensive-minded. And his hand positioning, you know, Wilder will throw his right hand from his, anywhere between his nipple and his hip. But if when, he's going to knock you out, he's going to throw, he's gonna throw his right hand to try and take you out, yeah. which D David will know. When you're going to throw a powerful right hand, you're not going to throw it from above no. your head. The main point here is Tyson taking away the distance from Wilder. Keeping the, maintaining the gap? Maintaining the gap, keeping the distance, making him fall short, which then leads and forces... While Tyson's got space behind him, he can take the distance away. When he's in a position where he can't, Wilder falls in and smothers his own work because yes. he's trying to punch through the target and close that gap, and he's starting to force things. Um, keeping him turning as well. Mm. And the footwork of Tyson, obviously, as we know, as he done in Dusseldorf against Klitschko and he done in his first fight, is vital for him because although he's a man of that size, that reach and that ability, to have the feet and to be able to always be that step ahead is a massive factor for him in the fight. You know, that, that is one of his massive weapons in this fight and it's something he needs to continually work on and refine and mm. just because it's going to be very much needed in a, in a rematch with Deontay Wilder, knowing he was out of range the first time. Wilder's feet are going to be that closer this time because he knows I don't want to be big swing missing like it was in the first fight. So as much as uh, Wilder needs to get closer, Fury needs to be fully aware that's coming. So maybe go the opposite, maybe come closer. Maybe as Wilder's Smaller launching in, yeah. meet him in the middle to take that, that sweet spot away from him. And Ben here, he just wanted to show us this, this day, just how he's avoiding shots as well, Tyson. Yeah, see, Tyson makes it hard for, for people to be able to do so. But Wilder's a lot better at cutting off the ring than people think. And we knew that he was going to try and force Tyson around this way. And Tyson defensively, he had to get side on, get the shoulder round, use his height and be able to avoid that right hand when forced to go that way. Yes. Um, and he done that effectively. And, and as we see throughout the fight, he was uh, taking the distance away and, and keeping Wilder turning, which was very important. And this frustrated Wilder, didn't it? All it throughout the fight. frustrated Wilder. But the other thing is what Tyson's just done there is... He's physically controlled the distance. As heavy as Wilder would try to commit, Tyson's used his lead arm to physically keep Wilder at bay. Yeah. Um, if you do this stood still, the shot will come over or the shot will come underneath, which when it goes underneath will lead to the head. But he's mixed that in with taking the distance mm. away with the feet, which was very successful throughout the night as well. David, I mean, you know all about the mm. right hand, the yeah. haymaker right hand. It's such a difficulty to get this right hand onto that chin, especially it, with a big obstacle. It back. really is. When someone sort of put, posts their arm right out in front, it, instinctively it covers your chin. You, don't, you can't see the chin. When my arm's in front, yeah. your chin's hidden behind your shoulder. And it's hard to launch your right hand because you just assume you're going to hit the back of his arm and miss the shot. If anything, you're going to look to go to the body or move the arm away or, you know, or just reset and wait until the arm moves in a different direction. Now he, now he attacks again. He was riding shots quite well. For you. I've never seen anyone ride shots with Wilder, mm. but his timing is that good, he can literally take his chin away from the shot mm. and, and that, take the sting out of it. That, um, that this, your best asset defensively is your eyes, because if you can see it coming, you can defend it. If you can't mm. see it, you can't defend it. Mm -hmm. And that distance that he was able to maintain mm. allowed him to see what was coming. Let's just watch this little feint before he jabs. Is it, it's very, very tricky. It's very, very simple, but there, there it is there. It's a like little double, double feint. Yeah. It's a double feint. There it is again, and it just, it just tricks um, John Terry Wilder. Again, he's flicking out his jab. I thought he jabbed very well. I think it's because his arms are so long and he's not trying to knock you out with a jab. He's just happy if he touches you in the face because that knocks you off balance. It messes up your rhythm. Mm. It uh, unsettles your flow and you have to reset afterwards. And uh, he, he's become a master of doing it. He's become a master of flicking that. It is a, it's a flicky jab, but you don't want it in the face when a, an 18-stone man's flicking in the face with those 10-ounce gloves on. You can feel his knuckles in the face. It might not look mm. devastating, mm. but take 16, 17 of those around, you start marking your face up. 100%. And for me, the important thing was Tyson being a big man when he was throwing the jab like David Tan, he wasn't stepping into it. If I'm stepping into it, Wilder's just got a timer with a right hand. Mm. I'm not going to give away a jab to take a right hand, especially off of this man. <laughs> he boxed around Wilder. He threw the jab while circling Wilder, which is important because if he's trying to get, trying to punch through the target, I'm giving an opportunity to take one back. Mm. And the double feints, as well as it, it makes you make a decision. If you don't respect it, I'll make you pay for it. Yeah. And if you do respect it, it's opened up the distance. So it worked in, in different ways for Tyson as well. What I also thought he did well because I believe his, his power is underestimated. I think Tyson Fury has got decent power. And he showed it a couple of times here with a couple of great one-twos, straight one-twos, basic punches, but it kept this man at bay. Let's have a look at it. There's a good right hand there going through. 
And let's have a look at this one here now. An interesting point is when you throw this at Wilder, he always comes back with the left hook. Yeah. I believe, and the fight that I studied to, to set this game plan out was actually Sugar Ray Leonard versus Thomas Hearns. I see it as a similar clash of styles. Right. OK, that's interesting. Um, and the shot that actually was the beginning of the end for, for Hearn was sort of a one-two, and he come up with so, sort of a lifting hybrid between a hook and an uppercut, like a lifting left hook. And when Wilder snatches at his left hook, the right hand comes away, I do believe that that's a shot that Tyson can definitely have success with. Let's have a look at it here again. It's a good left one hook again, But he still stays at distance. Look, then he's back out there. Good it, boxing. His body weight comes through the shot as yeah. well. He rotates all the way through it. It's the opposite to what he does with his jab. Yeah. He's actually putting all of the, his body mass, so he doesn't have to load up with it because he's such a big man anyway with long levers. Any big man that size turns through with a right hand. No, it's not like he's, he's, he's brought it from here and it's, all, it's a big snapping shot. Yeah. He goes all the way through it. He's nice and relaxed with his shot nice as well. Relaxed. Doesn't take that much energy from mm -hmm. him he's also. And if he misses the shot, his head's off the line and he's not in, a, in that much of a danger zone.